It seems like there are so many more parties happening during the summer. People take less time to work and more time to relax and enjoy. Kids are off school and there always seems to be a barbecue or a pool party happening. And if you're having guests come over, you want to make sure that your house is clean and ready to receive them. I know for me, I'm having a party here next week and there are some things I'm going to do that you would expect. Vacuuming, cleaning the kitchen, the bathroom, that kind of stuff. But there are some extra things that I like to do and I'm going to share them with you this week to show you how you can really get your house prepared for a party. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if a summer barbecue is one of your favorite things. Your first area to prime is your front entryway because that's what people are going to see. And remember, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Not a Melissa Maker original quote, but definitely a meaningful one. You want to make sure that your front entryway looks clean and welcoming. So clean those windows if you have them. Make sure that there's no grime or dirt on the floor in the vestibule. Also ensure that there is enough hanging space if for whatever reason people need to hang something up, as well as ample shoe space, whether it's in the closet or out in the hallway. And one thing that I think is an absolutely brilliant idea, because I'm always looking for one, is to have a DPA or a designated purse area. That way anyone bringing a purse with them knows exactly where they can put it. It's safe and they'll know where to find it after. I'm not saying you have to do this in every room, but look at the space that your party is going to be in and clean the windows in those rooms on the inside and the outside. When people come over, they want to peek around, they want to look out, and we don't often think about windows, but when there are fingerprints or splatters or dirt on the window, it really does affect how clean and beautiful your space looks. So I have a video on how to clean your windows really quickly. I'm going to link that for you down below. I do it. It literally takes seconds and it makes a huge difference. There's no doubt that your guests are going to use your bathroom. And if you have multiple bathrooms and you have a powder room where your guests are going to be, amazing. You've got less work to do, but you still have stuff. But if you're in a smaller space and you have one bathroom, you have a little bit more homework. First up, check your medicine cabinet, because if you don't, your guests will. And you don't want them finding that blah, blah, blah cream or those <laughs> special pills, you can just put those away. Next up, and this goes for everyone, hand towels. Make sure you have clean hand towels. Nothing's worse, and this just happened to me on the weekend, than going to someone's house, seeing a big bath towel, and using that to dry your hands, because you know what people do with bath towels. I don't want to be touching that. You also want to make sure that you've got a lot of toilet paper, because people are going to go through that, so don't make them search for it. Ensure that you have a plunger there in case there are any slow toilet moments. You don't want people having to peek their head out purple in the face asking for one. Awkward. And of course, ensure there's enough hand soap so that way people can always wash up and feel comfortable. Stay on top of your clutter. When people come over, they don't want to be tripping over things. And you know what? Even if your house is in pretty good shape, it's still a good idea to go through and remove any visual clutter. This is something that Chad and I do before we have guests over. I mean, our house is pretty okay, but when people come over, we just want it to look streamlined and clean. So we'll take a few minutes. We'll put stuff in a temporary holding zone, not a permanent holding zone. And then once the party's over, we'll put it back or put it in a different spot where it actually belongs. As well, you want to remember to get rid of anything that is expensive or pretty or that you might not want broken because at parties, people tend to get a little clumsy for various reasons. And the last thing you would want, and I'm sure the last thing they would want, is for that special thing of yours to get broken, stained, dinged, or damaged. So just put it away if you really love it and then bring it out once the party's over. 
There are two kinds of parties. There are the fancy formal parties where you break out the china, and there are sort of the more informal parties where you eat on disposable dishware. And you know, those ones are good because you tend to not run out of things, clean up's a lot easier, and it's a great way to just save yourself some time. For me, I always like to look for the more environmentally responsible options, but really when I'm throwing a party, it does make things easier. And I also find that people are quite respectful if you lay out your garbage, your recycling, and your compost bins. They'll certainly want to help ensure that they put the food where it belongs, in the compost bin, and anything that's recyclable, so long as they can see the recycling bin, they'll know exactly where it goes, and same for the garbage. So if you clearly line that stuff up, it'll make things a lot easier for your guests and a lot easier for you. And if you are using formal dishware, it does look beautiful, but you do need to spend a couple of extra minutes making sure that it looks nice. So if any of your silverware is spotty or has like an old piece of cheese on it, just make sure that you dip it in some hot water and vinegar and give it a good cleaning with a flat weave microfiber cloth. That'll really polish it up and get rid of anything that shouldn't be there because nothing is grosser than picking up a fork with a chunk of something on it or drinking out of a glass with some weird floaters or a lipstick stain. The way your house smells definitely affects people as soon as they walk in the door. And you want to be that guy that has the house that makes people smile when they walk in, not the one that makes them do a little, that's gross. So what you can do, have some fresh flowers, light a candle, diffuse some essential oils, all the Clean My Space favorites. I have lots of videos about how you can make your house smell great and I will link some of those down below. But other things to think about, if you have cats like I do, we make sure that our litter box is empty and that the litter is changed because no one appreciates the cat pee smell. And if you have pet blankets or pet beds, you might want to launder those too. You can also spray a fabric refresher on any upholstery and make sure that you vacuum it just to get rid of any dander to be respectful of people who have pet allergies. Well, you don't want to expect the worst, you certainly have to be prepared for it. Recently, when I had a party, a friend of mine had a few of these and dropped one of them on the floor. But thankfully, it wasn't too much of a challenge because in the next room, we had a big pile of microfiber cloths, we ran and grabbed one, and the mess was cleaned up in seconds. It really helped our friend not feel bad about the spill, and obviously, we made sure that our hardwood floors did not get ruined. Whew. So when you're having guests over, make sure that you have a little cleaning emergency preparedness kit somewhere easily accessible. So you've got stain removers, you've got things to blot up spills and thrills and other stuff. And I've got a video on that, which I'll link down below for you. It just makes a lot of sense. That way people don't feel bad or awkward and you know exactly what to do in the event that a mess happens. And trust me, if you're having a party, a mess is gonna happen. This week's comment question is, what is your favorite thing to bring to a summer barbecue? For me, I don't bake, so I like to make guacamole. And recently I've been experimenting, I've done mango guacamole, I've done regular guacamole. It always works out really, really well. And no matter how many avocados I mash up, they're all gone. I'd love to know what you like to make. Is it something that you bake? I'm not a good baker, so I never go the baking route. Is it like a healthy kind of veggie dish or is it like a crazy, junky, but delicious dish that everybody goes crazy for? Let me know in the comments down below. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love. And to learn more about our maker's cleaning cloths, you can click this button right over here. There's a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.